Hello, you want to see a weird laptop? We yes. have a really weird laptop for you. Uh, I'm Sasha Segan, this is Tom Branton. This is One Cool Thing, PC Mag's Daily Show, where we show you one cool thing, which we are testing out here in the PC Mag Labs. And today it is a really weird laptop. I'm so excited about this because I like things that are strange. This is the Asus ZenBook Pro 15. And Tom, what is going on? Why am I watching videos in my touchpad? Okay, so here we go. We have a YouTube video queued up here. Notice it's on this touchpad and we're gonna press play and you can actually see yourself, Sasha, in this. There's your arm. Uh, and uh, you can basically use this, this touchpad as a second screen for the ZenBook Pro 15. The touchpad is a screen. Why is the touchpad a screen? So I think there's a couple things that they were trying to do with this. One is wow you with novelty, right? I I'm mean, certainly wowed. There's nothing else that I know of like this currently. There's been a few other things years ago that were similar to this, but also the, the um, there are, you know, there's the touchpad from the MacBook Pro. Yeah, I feel things like, like that. Are, I feel are, like they took a look at the yeah. Mac's touch bar and they said, you know, oh, you like this. Well, if you like this, right. you know, we'll do it nine times bigger. Yeah, and the thing is though, so, you know, you can compare it to the MacBook Pro touch, touch bar all day, but one thing that this has is a touch, main touch screen. So this actually has two touch screens, something the Mac Pro, uh, MacBook Pro definitely does. So this is like a laptop DS. <laughs> yeah. It's like the biggest DS in the world. Well, for it to be a DS, this would be a much, I mean, it's, the proportions are off. Okay. But, but, yeah, but yes. <laughs> okay, no, I guess that would be the, the Lenovo Yoga Book, right? Right, right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, okay, so we have the, it's spooky watching myself in the touchpad. I know, it is very strange. <laughs> um, so we, we have the touchpad, we have the touchscreen. Let's go through the basic specs on this ZenBook Pro because another thing I was impressed by is the Core i9. Yeah, indeed. So this is actually the top of the line ZenBook Pro 15, which uh, comes with an Intel Core i9 processor, um, one of the very few Core i9 laptop chips that we've seen that isn't in a gaming mm -hmm. you know, thing, something like that. Not only that, but it comes with also a, a really high-end gaming graphics card, not, not high-end, uh, a mid-range gaming graphics card, an NVIDIA 1050 Ti. Um, they put all that stuff in here because I think they want you to use it as a creative design powerhouse. And now, does that mean no battery life? Yeah, unfortunately the battery life is very low. I think it's like five or six hours. We'll get to we'll get to the actual um, specs in but a minute. It's, uh, you know, you put a Core i9 and a 1050 Ti in a laptop, uh, you're going to have to put some fans in there, you're going to get bad bad. And it's life. not that thick and it's not that heavy, you see. No, so, right, yeah. yeah. Uh, is, this a, is, this a, is this a, what's screen resolution? Okay, so have? this is the, again, the top of the line one comes with a 4K 15 inch screen, which I think looks really good. The colors oh. on here are, it, the color temperature is really nice um, without fiddling it with any settings. I think it, it looks great. How much does this ridiculously spec laptop cost? It's not $17.99 no, like so it says on the website. It starts at 17 dollars but the version that we have isn't that much more. It's twenty. It's twenty three hundred, which is a lot of money for a laptop. Right? But but that's safely in MacBook Pro yeah. slash Surface Book range. Exactly. And those don't have a secondary display in the touchpad. I'll tell you that. Um, let me go through some ports here. You know I love ports. Uh, we have our headphone, micro SD slot, two USB A's on the side. On the other side, power. HDMI, two uh, USB-C Thunderbolts. Mm -hmm. So I like that nice mix of A's yeah. and C's. Um, in terms of uh, storage and memory, I'm sure it goes up and down the line, right? Yeah, there, this one has 512 gigabyte SSD, but um, you can. there are three different versions that you can mm -hmm. buy with lesser storage, a Core i7, things like mm -hmm. that. Uh, let's take a question. Can I run Doom on the touchpad? Yeah, so this is one of those scenarios where Doom, uh, for those who are unfamiliar, is a bellwether test for, you know, will it run Doom? If so, great, it's a thing. <laughs> Did you run uh, Heaven on the touchpad? Uh, no, I didn't actually run any of our benchmark things on the touchpad, which I will explain why in a second, but um, it will run Doom. Not only that, but like you can run Doom on the MacBook Pro touchpad very awkwardly. Touch bar. Sorry, touch bar. bar. Uh, Doom on here would be fine because basically you can drag any app Mm -hmm. that you want from here onto this touchpad and it will run. So why didn't you run the graphics benchmarks on the touchpad? So we have a rule that says that we turn off all lights and case accoutrements uh -huh. uh, in order to do 
uh, benchmark testing, and so I followed that rule. Okay, okay. So <laughs> speaking of benchmark testing, let's go into the benchmarks on this very powerful laptop. Uh, scrolling down here, there's got to be a benchmark chart somewhere in here. Oh, Whoa, you, you wrote a heck of a review. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, so, so there you go. Six hours of battery life. Not, six hours of battery great. life. Not so great, but man, that's a Cinebench score. Yeah, so there you go. I mean, basically, you have tons of threads and tons of cores with this Intel Core i9, and uh, the Cinebench test that we do is really the thing that takes the most advantage of that. Higher the core count, higher the threads, the more you're gonna get on Cinebench. A score of 1200 for a laptop is really good. So one thing I see, and I also see this really, really nice Photoshop score, and one thing I see here, like one potential use I see here, is um, so you're doing Photoshop. Mm -hmm. You have an external mouse or uh, or a, or a Wacom pad right. connected. Okay, you're doing Photoshop, and you're keeping your palettes and tools on yes. here. Yes. Now you would think that'd be great, and you can do that with some apps. However, not Photoshop. There Why is, not? Now I'll show you how that works. So basically, what we're going to do here is we're going to switch switch this from the extension display mode mm -hmm. to the screen pad mode. Mm -hmm. um, you just press the F6 key to do that, and then this will automatically change to the actual screen pad thing, mm -hmm. where you have a row of customizable um, extension apps that you can use. Excel, Word, uh, Spotify. Actually, I use mm -hmm. that, although I, I'm not signed in currently. Unfortunately, Photoshop is not one of those, and, I, and that's a big, big problem. But, yeah. but I can talk about their improvements, but, but yeah, in general, there are some missing parts of it. Okay, okay, so now let's go down to the other benchmarks. We've got some graphics benchmarks here to talk about the effect of having a 1050 Ti yeah. in this laptop, um, and the effect of having a 1050 Ti in this laptop is, uh, once again, we're getting some pretty good 3D benchmarks here, although for gaming itself, surprisingly low. Yeah, so basically the 1050 Ti, um, immensely more powerful than any type of integrated graphics or even an MX series chip like the Spectre has, mm -hmm. but it can't compare to an actual gaming a laptop like the Razer Blade, which has a 1070. Mm -hmm. um, but the, yeah, and so that's why you see the, what you're referring to here is that those numbers are a little low on, on all for quality settings, mm -hmm. but it's not a gaming laptop, it's for, you know, Screen pad. It's screen a padding. it's a it's a it's a media production <laughs> laptop yeah, right. is kind of what we're what we're describing here. Right. So now, right before the oh, it looks like we have some more questions. We just have someone's a little confused with the touchpad. Can it just be used as a normal touchpad? Yes, indeed. So let's let's go to the uh, screen pad mode off here. We'll press F6 again, and we can go to traditional touchpad mode. And there you have and and the best part about this is. You can't tell it's a screen. Yeah, with the with the touch bar on the MacBook Pro, when it's well, you can't really turn it off. And it look you can tell mm -hmm. the, you can see the pixels inside there when the sun's shining on it. It's it's. But it's this bad. just looks like a touchpad. But this literally looks like a touchpad. It's very comfortable to use. Works very well. Mm -hmm. um, so it's really if you don't like the touchpad, you just want a Core i9 laptop. You know, that's fine. That's nice. That's nice. So now, just before the show, though, you were telling me something that. Asus did that I feel is like a vast tactical error because this just came out, yes. right? We reviewed this like this week. Yes. And, and they, they've already rendered it obsolete. Yeah, they just this just went on sale three weeks ago. Then one week ago, last week, they came out with an even better, I think, initially, we haven't tested yet, but I think it could be better, the ZenBook Pro 14, which has the screen pad, but it's much smaller and lighter and it's more more portable and, and I think that that ultimately will be a bigger hit. So if you want the screen pad, you might want to wait for the ZenBook Pro 14. And along with that, they address two big problems with the screen pad. One is when you're using it as the extension display, you can't actually click on items on the screen. Like you know how you can mm -hmm, do on mm -hmm. here, you can press X to close a window. Mm -hmm. You actually have to move the cursor. They fixed that and they also made it much easier to drag windows from, from the big one to the small one. You can actually just press a button, it will automatically switch. And now, is that something that could be improved in firmware on this yes. model? Okay. Yes, and okay. in fact, yeah, they, I, I've already actually seen there's been an update here and, and we did get that on this one as well. So um, those two improvements, you know, if you somehow managed to do one of the 
first people to buy this, you'll get that. You'll get so that. if you want the 15 inch with the Core i9, you you shouldn't fear it's a that you'll be left behind. Exactly, yeah, that's a software improvement. Um, but if you just want a screen pad laptop and you don't need this, this really ridiculous, beastly Core i9, uh, I would wait maybe for the Zenbook Pro 14. Okay, okay, any more questions out there? Do you feel like you use the touchpad in your like in your normal workflow for like the different apps and stuff like that? So I the only one I really used was Spotify. Um, it was very convenient to be able to skip tracks using the Spotify pull down menu on the touchpad rather than having to dig through because if you're you know doing something on the screen, Spotify is mm -hmm. in the background. That was very handy. I did not use so much the Excel or Word things. I don't. I mean. Well, it happened to be the, the day or two that I was using this, I wasn't using Excel at all. But I just didn't find those to be that useful. Um, there's also two calculator apps. You don't really need two. Now, the, the Excel thing, what is it? Does it let you like switch between your multiple Excel windows? Yeah, so that's a big problem in my life. I often have... Uh, people who watch this frequently know that I'm a big Excel user, and I often will have four or five Excel windows there that I'm trying to copy things between, and it's good to be good to have a better layout of what I've got. So here you go. So you've got the Excel mm -hmm. um, thing open now, and what you what you can actually customize it a little bit. So there, there you go. It's you know you can do font layout mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, others but it'll tell me which windows i have and let me flip between uh, them i'm not sure that's that's what i'm really looking for 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 a secondary screen from excel actually yeah you know i really i really am not sure about okay, that okay. this looks it looks like it's just uh, entering in formulas entering formulas for your formula bar yeah. mm, okay it might be customizable. Okay. Um, now, yeah, is there so. an API? Can application providers yes. write for this? Yeah, so basically what you would do is, um, well, I'm not sure what you do if you're a developer, but if you're looking for additional app, screen pad compatible apps to install, you can just search in the Windows Store for screen pad, um, and you'll get a bunch of ASUS approved apps. Uh, is this the first screen pad laptop? Yes. Okay. okay. Yeah, they so just announced just this started. in May, and they just started selling this three weeks ago. Okay. Okay, great. Any last questions out there? No? Well, this is the ASUS ZenBook Pro 15 with the screen pad. One of the, the weirdest, wildest, <laughs> wackiest innovations I've seen on a laptop this year. It is super cool. It is super strange. It is between $18 and $2,400, depending on how you configure it. Uh, great power, not so great battery life. Four stars. Not an editor's choice because this is one of those like it's oddball wacky. products. It's wacky. Yeah, yeah, it's wacky. Uh, thank you all for watching. This has been one cool thing. Uh, if you are watching us on Facebook live, thank you for participating in the discussion. We will be back at 10 a.m. tomorrow with another live show. If you are watching us on YouTube, then please like and subscribe. We have a new one cool thing every day. Thanks a lot.